It's been widely known that the United States Navy's most important shipbuilding project is the new Columbia-class ballistic missile submarine. In this episode of Learning Military, I'll share with you what makes this new class of submarines so important. What do we know about the capabilities of these ships? What are their specifications? And what are some of the challenges facing the Navy in getting them produced? As usual, I've scoured a number of government documents and academic resources to give you the best information possible. But first, just a friendly reminder to like the video, subscribe, and check out Patreon to support this channel. Now when it comes to the nuclear weapons platforms employed by land, sea, and air, what makes submarines so unique is their survivability in the event of a nuclear attack. The idea is that the enemy won't know where our ballistic missile submarines, or more commonly known as boomers, are. Therefore, our boomers almost guarantee that there will be a devastating nuclear response from the United States. And for some time, the responsibility of delivering that nuclear response from sea has been with the Ohio-class ballistic missile submarines. First commissioned in 1981, these submarines have been a big part of the United States' nuclear deterrence. However, it is time for the Ohio-class to be decommissioned. There is new technology that is now available, which is needed to ensure the survivability of boomers, especially in the event of a great power conflict. Here is what we know about these ships so far. An important specification is that the Columbia class is going to be equipped with 16 missile tubes rather than the 20 usable tubes on the Ohio class. Additionally, the Columbia class will have X-shaped stern control surfaces and when completed, the Columbia class submarines will be the largest submarine that the United States has ever produced. But don't get too excited by that fact though, because it's not like the Columbia class will be as large as say the Russian Typhoon class. It's just going to be one foot larger in diameter than the Ohio class submarines. One thing to get excited about though, is the new electric drive system on the Columbia class. In other nuclear powered submarines, the nuclear reactor generates heat and steam, which causes turbines to turn. Reduction gears are in place in a mechanical drive system, which allow the screws to spin at the necessary revolutions per minute. In a study by MIT, it was said that with a mechanical drive system, 80% of the total reactor power is used exclusively for propulsion. So by using a purely electric drive system, this is going to allow for more efficient use of the created power and it will cause the sub to be more silent. We also know that there are 12 submarines planned in this new class and it's important to point out that while this is obviously less than the 14 nuclear weapon equipped Ohio class, the Navy is quick to point out that this won't reduce the number of deterrent patrols that boomers will be out on. The reason why this is the case is with Ohio class submarines, each sub has had to go through a massive overhaul in the midpoint of their life. And this overhaul included various upgrades, but most importantly, it included the refueling of the ship's nuclear reactor. The Columbia class, in contrast, will not need to refuel its nuclear reactor over the expected 42 year lifespan of each boat. The first ship of the class, the USS Columbia, is expected to cost $14.4 billion. $8.4 billion of that is for the actual construction, and about $6 billion is for plans, detailed designing, and non-recurring engineering costs for the class. Commonly, the lead boat is more expensive, but we know that to build all of these ships, the Pentagon expects to pay, and this is counting for inflation, about $133.2 billion. And that is quite a bit of money, but remember, this is a very important program for the Navy and for our ability to deter other countries. There are a lot of things that people are keeping their eyes on with this new class, and the first of which is the schedule that these new submarines are going to be built. The first patrol that the USS Columbia is expected to take part in will be in 2031 when the first Ohio class boat is decommissioned. However, the Columbia class has already experienced some issues and delays that put that schedule at risk. For example, in 2018, faulty welds were found on the missile tubes for the USS Columbia. Then there are issues with the decrease in manufacturing caused by the pandemic. In one report, the manufacturer of the missile tubes saw a 30% decrease in productivity at certain points during the pandemic. That decrease in productivity originally amounted to a delay of a few months. However, efforts are being made to make up time in this project, and the hope is that these efforts will take the delay from weeks to months. When it comes to manufacturing though, there isn't much that can be done to pick up the slack. After all, the submarine construction base is pretty limited. There are only two shipyards in the country that have the ability to build nuclear powered submarines. With the Virginia class attack submarines being constructed simultaneously, there is concern that not only is there no one to help pick up the slack, but we might be asking these shipyards to do too much. Especially as they're looking to produce the Virginia and Columbia class simultaneously. 
Bottlenecks in the construction process could impact not just the Columbia class, but Virginia class as well. And there are examples of this being an issue. In a 2019 press report, it was noted that the Virginia class was at one point being hailed as being on cost and on schedule, but those were being built at a rate of one boat per year. When the Virginia class started to be built at a rate of two per year, they stopped being delivered on time. There are also some technical concerns as well that might cause some setbacks, especially with the new electric drive system. New classes produced by the Navy have been plagued with some technical challenges as of late. The LCS has had issues with propulsion, the Ford class carriers have had issues with its electromagnetic catapult system, and the Zumwalt class has had its share of problems too. It's quite understandable that there would be concerns with this new class, but on the flip side, the Navy has been doing some prototyping of the electric drive system that looks promising. In a press report that came out last year, Admiral Frank Caldwell, the Naval Nuclear Propulsion Program Director, stated that they put the prototype through tests to simulate some of the most stressful conditions a sub could encounter. When discussing those tests, he said that the prototype, quote, performed flawlessly. It exceeded all of our design expectations, close quote. Another positive note is that some of these systems and technology that are going to be used on the Columbia class are currently being employed on the Virginia class attack submarines. This means that these systems have already been proved at sea and are working. While this should help reduce the delays, I can't stress how tight the timetable appears to be and that the Navy can't absorb any additional delays if it wants to get the lead class built, wants to conduct sea trials, and get ready for Columbia's first patrol in 2031. The final concern to mention regarding the ship is the risk of cost growth. One can look at Department of Defense programs and see that in the case of many of these programs, the actual cost was much higher than the expected cost. Both the Congressional Budget Office and the U.S. Government Accountability Office have each expressed concerns with how expensive this program is actually going to turn out to be. In 2019, the Navy was 50% confident with procurement costs being accurate. That means they thought there was a 50% chance that it could be more expensive than they thought, but also a 50% chance that it could be way less than what they anticipate. It's not too helpful, but there should be a new estimate produced this year, which should have some more information regarding what they actually expect the cost to be. If the costs do run high, the Navy might have to make some hard decisions. Remember at the beginning where I said that the Columbia class is the Navy's most important shipbuilding project? Well, that means if it runs high, some programs will have their funding cut to make room for the Columbia class. There was some time though when the Navy shipbuilding budget was about $14 billion a year, meaning that the Columbia class could take up nearly half of the entire Navy's shipbuilding budget. However, that has been raised up to almost $20 billion, so it won't take up as much of the budget, but that's still a substantial portion. There are some lofty plans that the DoD and the Navy have regarding shipbuilding projects for the future, and they'll need every dollar that they can to make them a reality. If Columbia becomes much more expensive, it could put some of those plans in jeopardy if the shipbuilding budget isn't significantly increased. There have been some efforts to combat this threat to other projects or to reduce overall costs by proposing that fewer than 12 submarines be produced in the class. Many of these proposals range from constructing anywhere from 6 to 10 boats. Again, these submarines and their role in deterring adversaries is important, and I wouldn't anticipate a reduction unless the overall costs run way higher than anticipated. Well, I wish there was more that I could share with you regarding these new ballistic missile submarines, but as you can imagine, there is a lot of information about them that is highly classified and of course, loose lips sink ships. With what we do know, I am looking forward to the capabilities of these ships and what they'll be able to do at sea. But that being said, while these submarines are designed to lie in wait to launch their nuclear armed ballistic missiles, I genuinely hope they will never be given the order to do so. The amount of destruction that just one of these submarines can unleash is greater than anything that we can imagine. So let's hope that their presence at sea is enough to deter any adversaries. So with that, I just want to say, I hope you enjoyed this episode of Learning Military. There are more episodes that are going to be coming soon, so please make sure that you subscribe and click the notification bell to know when they come out. Also, like the video and check Patreon to help support me and the channel. Until next time, though, I've got your six.